How are you all? Very early one here for me, quarter past nine. And uh, I've been out and about for a good 45 minutes. I've been to my bees and uh, put some feed on for them. Put the boards on underneath. Had a bit of a sweep put around this. They've got some feed on them now. So I've just been doing that for it. Uh, the forecast rain here in Nottingham today. Saturday the 20th. Um, and I just uh, thought I'd do a quick early video just a catch up jobby and uh, give you a quick show around. Here's the grow on. This is the one that's salted. Um, I've not topped up with salt for a while now. Um, what's up with you? My dog's in the greenhouse and she seemed to. Uh, <laughs> found something are they? Nonetheless I'll some Summer What's the matter? What have you seen? A leaf or something? So she's seen something, it could be something a bit more. Normally dogs are oh, normally do spot things. It could be a frog. Could be a frog. So, right, the grow on pond is looking a little bit low because I, yesterday I had to give it a really good clean in the filter. I gave the filter, the easy pod, a really good clean last week. I got this bit of sponge and I got my arms in. You have to be very careful because it's stainless steel in these and you can rip your arms to shreds if you're not careful. Uh, I was careful, cleaned all the sides, all that sort of stuff, gave it a really good clean. Um, so that's that. The, the only thing I would say about these, the Easy Pod, which I don't like, great material and all that, but summer. But they do seem to let a, a little bit of light in and a nicer light, uh, amount of light for, there you go, the likes of algae inside on the wall. And not only that, it's the perfect breeding ground for eggs and larvae of that stuff that within a few days will be full like a jelly type appearance yeah so that'll be full so at the minute i've got these little uh some sort of larvae in here you see them flitting around everywhere so that's a bit annoying so yeah so that that's yeah that, that's a bit annoying actually about the easy pod um, so I'm gonna say it's a bit of a shame but um, so I'm not really sure why it's the color it is and the opaqueness it is to let light in because for me you really want darkness in the filter I think no anyway that's me that's what I found you get quite a lot of uh, greeny stuff growing inside and you are getting those uh, larvae in there a lot of them as well at this time of year i don't know what it's going to be like in winter they're probably going to extend all the way through the season excuse me come on come on let's go out let's go then come on <laughs> uh so yeah so that's that because i don't have it in my other filters in complete darkness so that's a bit annoying but anyway that's that uh, what I've not done because the water when I put my hand in last night it was a really nice temperature about 22 degrees so I didn't want to top up with water and put um, dechlorinator in so uh, I've left it like this I've put some secum prime in I could always do and uh, I've got it topping off there through the filter because there will be a bit of chlorine in that so that's just topping up slowly in fact it was just dripping like on a top up but um i put it on full so it fills up quicker so i'll leave that today because i did this yesterday so that's not oddly filled up overnight so i'll leave that running all day i'm about all day it's saturday the internal growth this 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 is this pond is doing great look how clean this one is um the kaku that bloody when I was measuring up last week and the flying fish 
that's done great fantastic um, the uh, what was it Tancho in there that I got that had that horrible side not also but where its skin had just gone red and then scales had gone scales come off and it really eaten into the skin so on my videos if you look back it's a short video how I cleaned it um, so but that's been in here now for about two months in assault and it's tell you what it really has the last week or so two weeks really covered over and really growing and getting scales back so that's fantastic and the Matsuba the head of that now is looking better so what I'm going to do, I'm going to push it as long as I can because there's another fish in my main pond that was similar to this and I don't want to leave that in winter in that pond and stay in the same. So what I will do is these, that koaku will go back in there and the other two fish I will probably put them in my main pond again or one of them at least, the Matsuba and then have the other fish in here. So that's that. There's tannins in here, look. I don't know what that is. It really is discoloured, and this one isn't. Um, this one is. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, thinking of the feed. I'm sure. So, onto the main pond. We'll have a little walk up there. So yeah, bees have been sorted. I've got a split now. I've got a nuke there, so I made a split because I uh, made a split and one, I thought one was queenless. It took two months, it wasn't clean, queenless. Bought a queen, the day I put the queen in, I found a new queen, so I had to make a split. Anyway, I love a bees, eh? So I'll have a walk up to the main pond. Everything since that rain, the last couple of days, has just gone absolutely mental. Even the grass has shot up now, look at it. Incredible. Everything was stalled, wilting, and all of a sudden we get this uh, rain, everything perks up again. That's Britain for you. So we've had a great crop of apples off here this year. Absolutely fabulous off this espalier. Too many. Enough for the bees, enough for the wasps, and enough for us. We keep getting them, keep getting some fall, some smaller ones. Need to clean up soon, they're still absolutely laden on there. This thing has done magnificent this year. This marginal, this Thalia, Thalia Del Beta. Look at this, I'm gonna step back. Look at the flowers on top, it's that big, I can't keep it bloody upright. And look at the flowers. Wow, what an absolutely amazing, imposing plant. I've put it in a, like a bigger plastic tub but um and there's something underneath it but it just keeps um going the frost will get that soon and it'll come down the lilies have gone absolutely crackers this year and grown um there's a bit of yellow there this probably might be lack of nitrogen or it could be just the age and sun but um i probably think nitrogen so this pond is doing great and <clears throat> I've sorted something out as well. I kept noticing that the water level kept going down a little bit. So every time I did a drop me foil filters to clean them, it'd take a lot longer to top up. Or well, once I'd top up, the shower would stop working. I've got it on minimum, by the way, because I went away and didn't want a chance of overflowing. So I could ramp that up a bit now, but with electrics and stuff, I've not been bothering. It's literally trickling. Um, so yeah, that's bothering me now with winter, thinking, well, what do we really need? So anyway, that's another story. Um, so yeah, so that's working again great because the water level's stopping the same. Now where the leak was, I've got a bus over there, there's a rubber bend, inch and a half, and it had split and it was squirting against the wall. It was like squirting out and causing like a ripple and overflowing. And since I've done that, water levels stopped the same great. So that means that the pond is now retaining more water once I'm topping up on my RO unit. So my RO is on solenoid valve, on a timer, solenoid valve. It's on for eight hours a day, but it's on for an hour, off, 
on for an hour, off, on for an hour, off. There's 250 gallon per day uh, membranes, okay. Um, there is some pre-filters, but they're old. There's a fine sediment filter, a carbon and something else. But on the actual membranes, before that, there is filter, there is two filters as well, which you get on RO units to protect it. Um, and I've got to say, it's been in now two months. I checked my um, the TDS, and it was still very, very low. Very low. It wasn't zero, because I've not renewed the DI resin. But it was, I think... 8 ppm something like that brilliant because my tap water is 200 ppm okay so that's going great so that means i'm getting 8 ppm water after two months there's no chlorine in it no chloramine in it all the metals have been removed for two months now that all one ro unit would cost 40 pound and i've gone two months so far the fish i've got to say are looking better as well the water's now looking um, a bit better as well. It comes to that time of year as well with the shade and stuff, so everything just seems to come together again. You have problems over some that seem to come together again and settle down. But the fish are looking gay. They're eating like pigs like most people's are this time of year. So I can't grumble. So, because what was happening before, what I was having to do before, was I was doing this, this, you know, water changing via, via the RO for eight hours a day, on and off. But then... That would be going in, and because it was low, because the water level dropped low once I cleaned my filters out, I was having to then put my hose pipe in into water to fill it back up quick. So actually, I was getting the TDS obviously from that and the risk of chlorine and chloramine from that into the pond. Now, fortunately for me, this I am quite low on chlorine in this area, Nottingham, but it does fluctuate, it can fluctuate. But anyway, I've got the RO unit on it, so I ain't got to bother about that now. And at the minute, what I've got to watch now is uh, KH, because with pure water, there's no buffering capacity within the liquid. It's just a pure liquid now. Okay, there's no minerals in there. It's H2O. It's going to rain in a minute, I think. It's still water. It's still H2O, but it's, it's still water. But it's just liquid with very minimal minerals in it now. So whatever I pull into this water, I now know that is the only thing that's going into the water. Whereas before you got all the things in tap water. Obviously you can't control rain, so whatever that gets in there, that gets in there. So, I tested the PPM last week, and it was, um, what was it, it had gone down a bit. I think it was 140. So it had gone down, 140, 150. You've got to watch these pens and that, they're not that accurate, so they're like a ballpoint. But the KH, and I've always had low KH on this pond, always, this is no different to me. Um, pH is around about 8, uh, and reducing a little bit, so that will continue reducing, I think. Um, and then the KH was bordering 1, it was just, you know that when you've got one drop in, it turns it blue, and one more drop and it's turning it, it's almost turning it um, to yellow, I'm there. So... I've got some bicarbonate of soda, so I'm just going to, I probably could get away with it actually because it's coming towards that time of year anyway where I'm not feeding as much, so the filters will slow down, they will reduce down, so the beneficial bacteria is not needing as many minerals and things like that, so I probably could get away with it, but I've got a sack of it anyway, so I think what I'll do um, I will just put some bicarbonate of soda in just to keep it buffered, you know, so they just don't stop it crashing. So I'm that person that, um, with the RO and the pH and the KH, it's a, a low level of KH. I'm not one of these that's wants 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 KH. Just don't want it. I'm just. That's where my pond has naturally fell. I've got to stress to you all. That's where my pond naturally fell. I left it for a long time and it's always been quite low KH. Never been above four, three. So if I was to get one, you know, aim for four, if someone says to me, oh yeah, you want your, you want your KH to be five, I would have to be dumping loads of bicarbonate of soda in this to keep it up, right? 
So to keep it up, even with my tap water, I was having to put bicarb in. And that to me is just ridiculous. So I left it, I got sick of that. This was a couple of years ago. Left it, let it do its thing. And it just stabled out in between one and three. So I thought, well, fine, if it's doing that, it's fine. KH is there, carbonate is there, just at a low level. Fine, and then I started researching and apparently, you know, this low level is beneficial to them. So I kept at that. But obviously now I've gone to RO, so now, because mine was at a low level, I am now bordering on, I could potentially, what they call, crash the pond. Now I have been looking at um, Snedden's, videos and stuff like that and I've, I've read with interest is stuff and I'm pretty sure and if I'm wrong put down in the uh, comments I don't want to mislead people but like I say this is only what I'm doing it's not these aren't instructional videos like most YouTube videos aren't a lot of YouTubers get absolutely slaughtered on Facebook pages and stuff we are most of them are not instructional they're just following them it's like a diary it's all it is for me okay to look back and through and see comments and stuff really interesting and it's nice to share these things with people and you know good um so <clears throat> yeah doing some research now mike i'm sure he tested mud ponds he's got a video on his youtube channel and he tested a mud pond or mud ponds in got all his test kit out and the kh i'm sure was zero and they don't buffer with bicarb in their ponds. So it kind of suggests that actually it just questions then is that, does that crash or is that crashing biological mead or is that negative to the koi? Now the only thing for me on that is obviously on koi ponds, not koi ponds, sorry, um, these mud ponds, they're huge. You've probably got oh, there's like 40 fish for a huge mud pond so therefore you are going to have a lot of natural I would have thought bacteria and stuff and lining the actual mud in the mud on the sides all that sort of stuff so so I'm, I don't know you're only going to have but then you know some a part of me says well you're only going to have enough bacteria that is being sustained by being fed by muck and stuff so yeah, so it's really interesting stuff. So um, I'm not so scared on being at this low level of KH because I've always had it. And I would encourage you all to do the same. See where your pond plateaus are and see where all your figures are. Your KH and your pH and your TDS. See where you are so you know what your source water is. So you've got your source water, you know exactly what that is. And then you've got your pond water. Two different bodies of water, think of it that way. Um, and then protect the pond from the source water because obviously there's no point having great pond water one minute and then you've got this crap water going in all the time it goes against the grain don't it so on that note low KH I'll see how long this RO goes I had some banter with someone a couple of weeks ago I'm not going to mention no names but they were really really ribbing me for having like a domesticated RO unit saying that Oh, well, you should have, um, that should be protected from a dechlorinator. Well, it is in a way because it's got its own membrane built in. Not membrane, because um, I'll knacker the membranes, but it has got filtration built into the RO unit. That was my point. My point, what I was making on this when I posted, just commented about RO, um, was that with an RO unit purchased domestic one, you don't need additional, i.e. big blues, blah, 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 blue, and all this stuff. You don't need to keep maintaining that because if you keep the filtration, the RO unit maintained, that will do it for you. Now, it might not last as long. Now, the comparison one with this other person was one of these big industrial ones that you get from uh, Finch Filtration, I think. It was like a metre long um, commercial membrane housing and then the membrane in there but I think it was like two of them uh, it was a big blue with all this DI specialized stuff in it that cost like 130 quid a sack um, the carbon stuff in this activated carbon I can't remember what they called it now there's some other type of carbon that they're putting in there 
And then I'm seeing videos of people that after a few weeks are getting chlorine through it because it's tracking through the big blue and having to roll it around the garden or shake it and stuff. So I thought, you know what, with all this stuff, nah, not happening. Just go to our O'Keefe. I've used it before on my koi ponds down there. So if you want me to discuss that a bit further or show you that a bit further, I will do. But comparing, someone comparing my unit and saying, oh, it don't work, or you need to do this, or it won't last, and you'll batter your membranes, when I know that that is not the case for me. Over the years of using Oro, the last 20 years, domesticated ones, I know it's not going to be the same as the uh, these big units, but I've not got the cost of the big units. A membrane and a housing for one of them big units will probably cost you 200 quid alone just for that. And then you're probably replacing it every year. Then you've got all the other stuff to keep it maintained so for me i'm not there for my pond i'm not there i'm having the second best thing thank you so on that note on that note i'm going to join the gym now join the gym been with my son twice happy day um forest to play in everton in a bit i'm a forest fan from nottingham my wife and my son have gone down to, or gone up, over to Everton with my father-in-law. So my daughter will be down and out and about in a bit. We're going to have some sausage pâtés on some uh, muffins. I'll have a coffee and a tea. We'll have a tea first and a coffee. And then chill out. Watch the match. Watch a bit of YouTube. You'll see this video after all that's happened. So you've had a good day, you had a good weekend, and uh, I'm glad I've done my bees already because that is coming over and they do get a bit cranky, they can come out and hit you a bit, but mine have been fine actually. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that quick catch up. You yeah, don't want a quick catch up. Chagoy, animal. And just feed out, yeah, I might just shovel the food in. <laughs> and the other feed coming in. Just just going off topic. My son my son, one of his friends come round the other day and uh, he was absolutely shit scared of the chagoy. When he fed it up going <laughs> I was absolutely pissing myself at him. I shouldn't do because he was scared, but I've never seen anything like it. But after about a few goes he got calmed down. He's <laughs> nineteen by the way. And, um, but yeah, it was funny. It was funny. He was really bricking it. It just shows you, we're all scared of something, aren't we? So, have a great weekend. See you next week on the next one.